Hey guys, welcome back to Axis and Allies The Garrison. This is Detroit once again coming to you from The Garrison here in uh, Rochelle Park, New Jersey. All right guys, so it's uh, turn five. Finally, we have uh, the opportunity to see what GI, uh, correction, what Corporal 24 is going to do. Corporal 24 is the commander in chief. Uh, he is Winston Churchill, uh, 1940s uh, United Kingdom. Okay, so he's running the show and he will respond to the Japanese aggression and to the Italian German aggression uh, today. So we shall see how uh, G uh, uh, Corporal 24 goes about responding. Okay, just a little bit of house cleaning before I go ahead reviewing or recapping uh, uh, Corporal 24's moves. Okay, for starters, uh, Yunnan. Okay, during my last video, uh, while, while I was uh, making my moves with China, I made an error. Okay, uh, I, when uh, attacking with my Chinese infantry. I, uh, what is it, my Chinese cavalry, I was under the impression that the Chinese cavalry attacked at three. Well, as, uh, uh, as it is, I was actually corrected and it was pointed out to me by several of my viewers and uh, uh, co-players uh, co that the Chinese cavalry actually attacked at two. Okay, I found out afterwards when I was at work, I worked nights, so I was unable to uh, uh, make the corrections. So fortunately for me, my Good buddy, uh, Corporal 24, did me a, a solid, did me a favor, and he re-rolled that battle for me. Okay, so uh, as it turns out, he rolled uh, using the cavalry with an attack of two, not three. And uh, fortunately for the Chinese, they actually did well. Uh, they only sustained three casualties, three infantry losses. They were still able to uh, uh, take uh, Yunnan, uh, fortunately for them. Okay, also... Um, j Hole in Manchuria, the situation with uh, G.I. Joe, uh, where will he land his aircraft? Well, as, uh, as I was advised, uh, he uh, uh, during his non-combat movement phase, uh, G.I. Joe, who, who is Japan, landed two fighters, two tacticals in j Hole, while in Manchuria, he landed two tacticals, three fighters in Manchuria. If I'm mistaken, please, uh, G.I. Joe, correct me, but as, as I understand it now, that's where your aircraft are, and when I show the, the ground conditions on the map, I'll go over that once again. Also, another two errors that I made, uh, which was pointed out to me by Dutch Lancaster, who's uh, my co-teammate, uh, who's playing, or, or the commander-in-chief of uh, ANZAC, uh, in Hawaii, I actually have four infantry. I believe I said I made, when, when I did my recap, uh, during my last video, I said I had three infantry, when in actuality it's four infantry that I have in Hawa in the Hawaiian Islands. Also, I forgot to mention that I do have a battleship off the coast of uh, Hawaii in Sea Zone 26. I forgot to mention that I have a battleship. I, God, how, how could I forget that, right? But hey, as I said, guys, I'm new to this. There is a learning curve to uh, the YouTube wars using uh, YouTube as a, as a platform. So please bear with me until I, I get up to speed, okay? All right, guys, so without further ado, I'm going to review uh, Corporal 24's moves as the UK. I uh, hope I don't make any mistakes, but uh, I'm going to review what his combat moves uh, were uh, earlier today. Stand by and uh, right, guys, the video. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is an overview, a quick uh, uh, overview of the current military situation on the ground in Northern Africa and the Middle East. We're going to uh, take a quick look of the situation on the Western Front and in Europe in general and on the Eastern Front, which should be should prove to be interesting once Syed uh, continue his, continues his uh, drive uh, deep into Russia, assuming that he does. Okay, here's the situation back in Southeast Asia. Okay, and of course, Southern China, where the Chinese Nationalist Army just took over Yunnan. All right, uh, here you have uh, the Japanese uh, fleet, okay, or fleets. Uh, currently, G.I. Joe has three separate fleets uh, in the Pacific. All right, so here it is. Uh, G.I. Joe um, landed two fighters and two tacticals in Jeho, and he also, the remainder of his air force in northern China, uh, which is uh, composed of two tacticals and three fighters, are or have been landed in China, in, in Manchuria. All right, guys, so let's go ahead with all uh, the combat movements. Okay, I have uh, preset uh, 
combat markers to show where the attacks from the uh, UK are going to take place in. So let's move uh, this battleship. Uh, this is the King George. All right, we're going to move the King George into Sea Zone 36. Yes, we attacked the British, the UK. The Royal Navy is attacking the Japanese fleet here in Sea Zone 36. Okay, so now we're going to move this destroyer. One, two, and three, attacking the fleet also as well. You have a fighter in Burma. It's going to go one, two, three, and four. That fighter will land in French Indochina. Okay, the remainder of the British Royal Air Force in India will also do the same. One, two, three, four. Oh, correction, let me see. Is that possible? One, two, three, and four. Yes, it is possible. Okay, it's four. So all of these aircraft actually have a, a remainder of one in their gas tank. So let's put a die there to make that uh, obvious. Okay, so then what do we have? We have a total of uh, one battleship, one destroyer, two fighters, and one tactical attacking one battleship a destroyer, a submarine, and one cruiser. Remember that according to the Sire Blood uh, rule, uh, uh, the Bloodbath rules, uh, cruisers get to defend at four as long as they're accompanied by a battleship. So let's not forget about that. Okay, let's go into China. The British are moving into one infantry division into Kiansi. Okay. That's it for all the battles in the Pacific for the UK. Now, okay, we're going to take this one naval cruiser in season 39. One, two, three. It's going to support a offshore bombardment of Ethiopia. Okay, this infantry will move in here. The one mech infantry, one, two, will blitz through Anglo-Egypt, Sudan. Okay, the naval transport in C zone 98 will pick up one infantry and one artillery piece one and two and land in Ethiopia okay all right so you have two infantry one uh, mechanized infantry one artillery piece and an offshore bombardment with the crews are going in there. That's one battle in Ethiopia. The next battle will be in off the coast of Malta. Okay, you have one cruiser moving in here. I have prepositioned these pieces already. One cruiser coming in from Sea Zone 91. Okay, and the fighter coming from Malta will also attack this single destroyer, Italian destroyer and naval transport. Okay, um, the Taranto Raid. Again, I have already prepositioned these uh, pieces for attack. Most of them anyways. You have the uh, Royal Navy. You have this these two fighters. Okay. And the one uh, bomber coming from London. Okay. The two fighters have no gas left. So that means they're going to have to have a place uh, to land. And of course, they will. And that's because you have a British uh, carrier moving in to provide uh, a safe landing spot. Okay, so you have one destroyer, a cruiser, a carrier, one tactical, two fighters, and a bomber for the British attacking the defending Italian battleship cruiser and transport. Uh, VK Cowboy, the commander-in-chief of the Italians, uh, has opted not, not to scramble his, his aircraft. Okay, so he will not be scrambling. All right, uh, for the defense of that uh, uh, Italian fleet. All right, let's go to uh, Europe and let's see what we have, what battles we have here also. We have two small naval engagements. Okay, here you have one destroyer from uh, Season 111 moving into Season 125 in a, at an attempt to taking out that sub. Okay, the fighter that is in... Uh, Scotland will also move in at a movement of two. It'll have two movements left, all right, attacking that sub. The destroyer in season 109 will move, will sail away one and two and attack the single German submarine in season 124. 
Oh, by the way, I forgot to go over or review what the purchases were. There. All right, guys. Sorry about that. I was experiencing some issues uh, with my cell phone. Uh, definitely the memory is getting low, and I have to address that uh, probably by the getting a new phone. But uh, before I got uh, disconnected here, I was trying to actually review the fact that I have forgotten to tell you what uh, the UK's purchases had been. Okay, so the UK uh, has an income of uh, 45 IPCs starting in Okay, UK will be seen for its uh, UK London uh, industrial complex for infantry and a fighter. Okay, in South Africa, uh, Corporal 24 plans to uh, recruit two infantry. Uh, and in the Indian, uh, what is it, uh, uh, industrial complex, he will be placing two infantry, one naval transport, and one artillery piece. And that's the review for uh, his purchases. All right, guys, uh, I believe that's it. I've gone over the combat movements, purchases, and now it's time for uh, time to resolve combat, which, of course, I will not show, but I will show what the uh, results are. Uh, are or were okay come back all right so corporal 24 uh, made his combat moves uh, actually and then actually resolved combat so let's review what happened all right uh the battle in kianzi was favorable it was just a walk-in the the uh british or uk infantry one infantry division moved into kianzi okay successful there and of course the big one was the battle off the coast of hainan the the Japanese fleet was totally smashed to bits. Uh, the British did lose, uh, what was it, the one uh, a destroyer, okay, that they they attacked with. So very successful battle for the British, okay. The Japanese lost a transport, a cruiser, a destroyer, a submarine, and one battleship. Extremely uh, favorable to the uh, Allies, to the UK. All right, so let's go into Ethiopia. The Allies here were also successful. The UK uh, invaded uh, Ethiopia with a loss of uh, two infantry. Okay, the Italians lost two infantry themselves, two infantry divisions, and one artillery division. Okay, up in um, off the coast of Malta, Sea Zone ninety six. Uh, the the uh, what is it? Uh, the the Italians lost. A cruiser, no correction, a destroyer, and the naval transports. Very successful, successful battle, and an extremely successful battle again for uh, Corporal Twenty Four, Season Ninety Seven. The remaining uh, Italian uh, Italian cruiser and battleship and transport were sunk to the bottom of the Aegean Sea. Okay, so uh, the the Adriatic is it or the Aegean? I'm not uh, quite certain at this time. In any case, uh, the British Royal Navy did not sustain a single hit, not one hit. Extremely uh, successful roles, uh, battles for the uh, UK. All right, in the North Atlantic, uh, the battle in season 125, the, uh, the UK was able to sink the single German uh, submarine U-boat in season 125. In season 124, though, the German U-boat uh, was dis sunk, was destroyed, sent to the bottom of the sea, but not before it sunk uh, the destroyer that uh, was attacking it. So they both neutralized each other. This was the only battle where the Axis actually had somewhat of a success. Okay, but again, at a price, they did lose their uh, uh, defending U-boat. All right, guys, uh, so Copa 24 resolved combat. I have already gone ahead then and uh, shown you the results of, uh, of the battle, of the battles that were uh, uh, that took place. Now I'm going to go and make a quick overview of the current situation on the ground. Uh, as you can see, the British have uh, moved their fleet assets uh, into season 123. Okay, uh, the British have also moved uh, their infantry and army unit from uh, Nova Scotia into uh, Season 91. The remaining naval transport in 109 fell back to uh, Season 106. Okay, so that's where that transport went to. 
Uh, Corporal also placed his four infantry that he just recruited into London, as well as his new fighter. You can see them there uh, patrolling the skies over England. Okay, uh, you have the uh, task force that was at Sea Zone 106 now in Sea Zone 91. Okay, uh, in the Mediterranean, um, you have the British Navy in Sea Zone 97. You have two fighters, a carrier. One cruiser and a destroyer, as well as a cruiser in season 96. The surviving uh, tactical fighter and bomber that's uh, miraculously survived the attack have been parked in Syria. So that's a tempting target for VK Cowboy uh, and his Italians. Let's see what happens. And of course, uh, Corporal 24 has reinforced uh, Cairo, uh, Egypt. Uh, you know, he needs to do that and uh, because... Uh, you need to make, uh, keep uh, Egypt strong, okay? It's uh, cer cer certainly a, a territory that you want to uh, maintain. All right, so uh, in off the coast of uh, Ethiopia, uh, Sea Zone 76, you have a small British fleet of a cruiser, destroyer, and a naval transport, okay? Um, the British have uh, annexed uh, Persia, so uh, the British now recruited two additional uh uh, infantry divisions from the local uh, ir uh, Persian Iraqi uh, uh, population. So now it's uh, they have a total of three infantry divisions as well as one artillery. Uh, there's also one naval transport off the coast of Persia. Sea zone, sea zone 80. The British also placed their new naval transport in Sea Zone 39. Uh, uh, Corporal 24 also uh, railroaded one AAA into Yunnan and moved in two infantry divisions from uh, Burma uh, itself. And no correction, I believe, it was, yeah, it was Burma. Uh, and three infantry divisions from Malaya moved into Shan State. Okay, and one infantry division and one uh, AAA came, were railroaded from Calcutta. Okay, so in French Indochina, you have one infantry, one AAA, one tactical, and two fighters defending French Indochina. And off the coast of French Indochina, you have one battleship, a damaged British battleship, the King George, uh, uh, patrolling uh, the sea coast off French Indochina. All right, so that's pretty much... Uh, oh, and I'm forgetting the two uh, infantry divisions that were raised uh, in South Africa, okay? And the two original infantry divisions that were here actually were railroaded into Anglo Egypt, Sudan. So the British are looking pretty strong. They had an extremely good round, very successful battles. Uh, Corporal 24 uh, <clears throat> played extremely well. Lady Luck smiled uh, this time uh, uh, at him. So that's a good thing. So the Allies are looking pretty strong at this point in time. However, the situation in Germany has still not yet changed in I mean in, at the eastern front anyway uh, Russia is playing a defensive war let's see how that pans out in the beginning of turn 2 but we're still in turn 1 uh turn uh or 1 uh the UK just finished making its moves now the Italians under the command of uh, VK Cowboy will start making their moves VK Cowboy uh the champion of uh the bloodbath uh is now making is preparing his moves. Uh, very smart man and a very savvy player. And let's see what he does. I'm sure that he will will not disappoint. All right, guys, uh, that's about it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, the Garrison. And uh, let's see. Uh, the ball now is on uh, VK Cowboys uh, court. Let's see what he does on his turn. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. And uh, as always, uh, don't forget to uh, hunker down and play. Detroit out. Oh, and I was forgetting to mention, guys, that uh, uh, <clears throat> the British actually were able to acquire three uh, more IPCs for the income tracker. So the British normally start at 45. And with the three, that'll make it uh, 48. So the they were at 45. Okay, so now they're going up to 48 plus their 10 national objectives. So the British... The UK will be collecting a total of 58 IPCs 
uh, which they will have ready for their uh, turn two uh, moves. Okay, so let's stand by for that. And uh, okay, now we're definitely out, guys. Um, Detroit out.